So I'm gonna mute you all because I see you're having way too good a time. I'm muting you guys. Current new participants will be muted. Oh my God, okay. Let's just make sure that you can all hear me. If you can hear me and you can use the chat, put in the chat, hear you or something so I know that everybody can hear me or this will be a disaster. Yeah, a few people say uh, they, can they can hear me, they can hear me, they can hear me. Right on. Okay, well, more people are coming, but I'm going to go ahead and get started. This is being recorded, so I will be able to put it up for people to see later. Hello, everybody. Got any questions? Yes, listen, if you have questions, put them in the chat as I'm going because Stewie is going to feed them to me. I am about to go off screen and I'm going to share the presentation with you, but I will be back at the end. If I feel like I got to say something and I need you to see me, I'll come back in the middle, okay? But here we go. Today, the topic of this webinar is called From Invisible to Unforgettable. And our goal is to put you in a position to be able to attract and keep more clients. I'm sure you guys have lots of days when you feel like it is so crowded up in here, but that doesn't matter. I'm telling you right now, you can set yourself apart in big ways and small ways that will make a difference with your client. So who am I? I'm, a, I'm sure that, well, I saw a lot of people that I knew. Yes? Don't forget screen shows on that. I know. Okay, I'll that but this is just... Okay. So, um, what was I saying? Oh, so I know that there are people here that I know because I saw them and I was saying hi, but there are also people here that I don't know. And um, so I want to tell you guys just a little bit about me because maybe that'll give you reason to pay attention. So I was a celebrity styling agent for 30 years, I had an office in Los Angeles. I was a celebrity styling agent for 40 years. I am the author of the Hair, Makeup, and Fashion Styling Career Guide. I'm sure you guys have seen a lot of that on my Instagram page lately. I'm excited that everybody's showing their book, which is like so cool, because trust me, when I wrote the first one, that didn't happen. I'm also the creator of the Packaging Your Portfolio Workshop. Now, let me just tell you, that's the short version. The long title of that is Packaging Your Portfolio, Marketing Yourself as a Freelance Makeup, Hair, or Fashion Stylist. And I also have tons of manicurists that have also taken that course, but that just makes the name too long. Also, I'm the co-creator of the Win Now Mentorship Program, which I co-created with celebrity makeup artist, Rennie Vasquez. And I know most of you, if you do makeup, you know who that is. So just to give you a little background, aside from the things that I've done, when I was an agent in LA, my agency was called Crystal Agency. And we, like I said, we work primarily on celebrities. I mean, we worked with um, uh, Kerry Washington, Pink, Alec Baldwin, Denzel Washington. I've got such great stories with Denzel. Uh, Janet Jackson, which was the first big celebrity that I ever did. Uh, Jim Carrey, Willem Dafoe, uh, Stevie Wonder, just a host of people. And I love telling everyone that my, one of my stylists, Lisa Michelle styled Charlize Theron for the Academy Awards when she won for Monster, which was a while ago, but you know, that's like the coolest, coolest thing. And one of the other artists that I represented that I still coach, you know, two, three times a year, she is the costumer on the new Gotti movie that's out. And now she's working with my favorite person, Who's the, what was that movie we went to see the other day, Stewie? Jane Fonda. 
And who's the woman Paul I love? Yeah, who was the woman I love though? Diane Keaton. Diane Keaton. Oh my God, Diane Keaton. She took a picture of Diane Keaton's boots and photographed them and tagged me on Instagram just to make me jealous. So we also worked on a lot of magazines. We did a lot of editorial stuff. We worked on um, Bazaar Magazine. Uh, I remember Nico doing Halle Berry for Bazaar. Uh, oh, I forgot Halle Berry was one of our clients. Uh, Essence Magazine, New York Magazine, USA Today, all the way to Jezebel in Atlanta, back to New York for GQ and Rolling Stone. As a matter of fact, we did um, Snoop Dogg on the cover of Rolling Stone once. Um, and we also worked on commercial jobs. So we did celebrities, we did editorial, and we used to work on stuff like United Airlines, American Airlines, Coca-Cola, Budweiser, um, and, and those kinds of accounts. And I, I was famous for getting people work and convincing decision makers to hire them, even though, and, and only giving out as much information that was absolutely necessary to get them the job, and then saying, oh, by the way, they've never done this before. Ah, yes. So, um, you know, Rennie calls me his secret weapon. If you've ever been to one of his classes, you probably actually heard him say that out loud. And recently, another young lady that took one of my Packaging Your Portfolio workshops, her name is Cindy Escalante, and she won an Academy Award um, or was nominated for an Emmy or won an Emmy for makeup. And she, in her video to me, she called me her wingman. So today, today, you guys, I want you to think of me as your wingman. So why did I want to do this webinar? Well, it breaks my heart to see you guys struggling in any way. I see people struggling trying to get into the business. I see artists struggling trying to get clients, struggling trying to hold on to the clients they have. Um, trying to figure out how to get paid, feeling like they're doing too much work for free. And I just thought, you know, you must feel invisible when you can't get the clients you want. Um, and it's like some people have all the luck, right? Doesn't it feel like that sometimes that you're over here it's like, remember that Robert Palmer song? Some men have all the luck. I know you guys don't want me singing. Okay, I'll stop. It, it just seems like sometimes things come really easy to people. When you're struggling, they've got tons of clients. Um, they're getting big tips in the salon and nobody, you know, people aren't tipping you at all. They're getting invited to places and to parties and to networking events. And you're scrambling around on the internet trying to find out where you ought to be. Um, and my favorite one is when you see all these artists and the celebrities can't stop talking about them. Like celebrities want to take pictures with them. They're always talking about them. They're always inviting them places. And on top of that, they're getting lots of referrals. And so is anybody else having any of these challenges? Are these any of the things that you're challenged with as it relates to getting work and getting business and keeping business? Tell me in the chat. Say yes. One of the things that we need to address right at the beginning is our attitude. Because honestly, our attitude determines our altitude. And as I'm saying that, I'm just thinking about one of my grads who lived in North Carolina and she moved to New York. And she told me, she said, because she had one celebrity client, she really thought she was all that. And in that space, she wasn't a very nice person. And in that space, more stuff was not coming to her. Well, last night, as I was putting together my presentation, I went to Facebook, there are like three little heads up there telling me that people want to friend me. I saw this, this woman and I clicked on her and this is what I saw. This is what I saw. 
She says, okay, let me fill you in. I do not, I repeat, I do not do free or discounted hair services just because you're a friend. A friend would respect that I paid $20,000 for a damn good education. And it's an insult when you try and con me into a full head of foils for $40. And she goes on, as you can see in this next screen. Frustration leads us to some very destructive outcomes. Let me assure you, going on Facebook and airing your dirty laundry because you're upset is a very destructive outcome. For one thing, it never occurs to you that your bad mood is going to end up in Crystal Wright's um, in, in Crystal Wright's presentation. And I can do it because you put it out there on Facebook for anyone to see. And I could see it even before I decided to become your friend. So what we want to realize is that our attitude can repel potential clients. I always say in PYP, if you're upset about something, call your best friend in Louisiana. Do not go on social media complaining and cursing and swearing because now look at this. Not only have I seen it, you've seen it, and there are tons of people on this webinar are gonna, that are going to see it. Our frustration can lead us to really destructive outcomes. But here's what I want you to know. And you may not like this, but what I want you to know is everyone has the right to ask you for anything that they want because you just might say yes. What if she had said yes to doing it for $40? Everyone has the right to ask you for what they want. And guess what? You have the right to say no. In this situation, and I'll tell you who said this to me, Rennie said this, you can control what you put out there, but you can't control how it comes back. And that's why it's so important to be aware of what you're putting out there and not to allow your frustration over what's not working in your career to get the best of you and make you want to put it out there on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, okay? So what are our desired outcomes? You know what we want? We want um, confidence. We want to be self-confident every single day when we go to work. And going to work as a freelancer is owning your own business. We want to be seen as the authority and the expert. We want to attract people to us. We want the, our actions and our attitude to produce trust in other people. We want to get referrals. We want people to feel relaxed around us. We want to get bigger tips. We want to generate buzz. And you know what we really want because it's exhausting us? We want to work less on social media. In other words, we really want social media to start working for us. And I'm going to give you a perfect example. Day before yesterday, when I went to bed, I had 9,263 followers. When I woke up in the morning, I had 50 more followers. I said, 50 more followers? Where did they come from in a matter of a period of like three hours? Well, you know what it was? It's a case of social media working for me. When someone else says something good about me and then other people say well who is she i want to know who she is what has she done and that's what happened and right now it's already over like 112 people in a 24-hour period 
That is what I call social media working for you. And that's the point that we want to get to. That if we miss a day putting something up as a post, we don't have to be freaking out because there are other people that are talking us up. There are other people that are tagging us and wanting people to know us. You know, whether it is that you're working on a job and the photographer tags you as part of the crew, and then that exponentially leads you to more people, we just want to generate some buzz and work less on social media. I believe that what's needed is that we improve our business and communication school skills, which actually equals new tools for us. And that's what we're gonna talk about today, about what you can do from a communication standpoint that will make your life easier and make it, and, and keep you from being frustrated or upset, okay? I believe simpler, things need to be simpler, they need to be more manageable, and I'm gonna give you things that are learnable. So where do we start? We start with changing our mindset, because the only way to get a different result, what is that saying uh, about doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result? Well, I believe that we need to change our mindset in order to get new results. And we're gonna do it with three simple things. Number one, we are going to define our why. That's not supposed to be defined, but defined. We're going to define our why. Number two, we're going to adopt a perspective. And number three, we're going to take a position. We're going to own our space, OK? We want to exude confidence when we're printing ourselves to potential clients. And in order to do that, we have to change our perspective. We have to narrow our focus, number one. Number two, we have to be able to communicate our passion, and that is where understanding your why comes in. Number three, we have to develop a viewpoint, a perspective, a position. And number four, we have to execute all of our dealings, business dealings, with professionalism. So here we go. A position of strength. In the marketplace, there are two pervasive challenges that I see. One of them is price, and the other one is everyone does X. And you're thinking, what is Crystal talking about? I'm going to show you. You can't compete on price. You cannot win if you're always trying to compete on price. The girl in the salon whose Facebook page I put up is trying to compete on price. And that is why she's losing. That is why she's upset. Number two, everyone does X means you can't be everything to everyone. And unless you make a decision that you are not just a makeup artist or a hairstylist or a manicurist or a photographer or a fashion stylist, then you just get lumped in with everyone else. And let me give you an example. This is what happens when you say, I'm a makeup artist. 48,289,391 posts. If you're using that as a hashtag in your social media, forget it. You're not even getting seen. Hair and makeup is a little bit better 
1,330,000. Beauty makeup is a little bit better, 1,023,000. But look at beauty makeup artists. Only 15,455 posts. I want you to put this in perspective for a minute. You're at an event. Someone walks up to you and you introduce yourself and you say, hi, I'm Denise. I'm a makeup artist. Okay, you and evidently 48,289,391 other people. You, I, I, I'm exaggerating but because these are posts, but you get what I'm saying. The more specific you can get about what you do, what you start to do is build your position. You are a beauty makeup artist. You are a fashion manicurist. You are a, even when somebody says celebrity hairstylist, at least that conjures up a vision. The thing what we want to do is we want to give people something they can wrap their heads around. And it's hard to wrap your head around makeup artists. Anybody who's taken one of my classes has heard me say, you cannot afford to just be your first name. I'm coaching a young lady right now, and her name is Juanita. But what does that mean to anyone? It means more if you say, hi, I'm Juanita Johnson. I'm a makeup artist. It means even more if you say, hi, my name is Juanita Johnson. I'm a beauty makeup artist and I live in Chicago, Illinois. Now you've given me something I can wrap my head around. You've told me who you are, what you do, what you specialize in, which is beauty, and you've told me where you live, which can open up a huge door for you with a potential client. It's really important to be more specific because as you own that, we want to specialize. It's like when somebody, when I introduce myself to someone, they say, what do you do? Oh, who are you? Oh, I'm Crystal Wright. I get people unstuck. It is an immediate conversation starter. The idea is that you want to specialize so you give something to people, some, you give people something that they can wrap their heads around. Okay? The next thing is that you can specialize in one to two areas. You know, you can say, I do beauty and fashion. Or I do uh, beauty and lifestyle. Or, but to think that, I can't tell you how many business cards I've seen when people said, say, well, I specialize in movies and TV and film and bridal and this and that. You become immediately become a jack of all trades. And if I want someone who I'm com absolutely 100% convinced that they're the best beauty artist that I can get, then I'm not going to choose you. I know it feels like sometimes if I don't tell people I do everything that they're not going to want me. But what you're going to find is that the people who want you when you say you do everything can't afford what you want to charge. Okay? The next thing we want to do is we want to extend the conversation to include your passion. Here's a news flash for you guys. People don't buy what you do. They buy why you do it. Remember for one second in those hashtags, the what is the makeup artist. And there are millions of them all over the world. People buy why you became a makeup artist. What are you passionate about? The same thing that you come up with when you sit down to think about your bio. 
the same thing that you come up with is what, when the same thing you come up with when you start to think about why you got into the business in the first place, why are you so passionate about this? Why did you quit your full-time job? Why did you stop being an accountant? Why did you give up being a nurse? Why did you tell your parents you weren't gonna be an attorney so you could become a makeup artist or a hairstylist or a fashion stylist and bear up underneath the pressure from those people who felt like you were making the biggest mistake of your life? The reason that you did it is what you wanna share with other people. And in fact, it's a game changer. I'll tell you why. I want you to, I'm gonna give you permission right now to not answer what's your rate or what do you charge before you tell people why you got into business. You don't have to answer that question. Did you know that? When was the last time you saw a politician answer a direct question? You haven't. So why are you answering them? If somebody says, what do you charge? There are a million other questions that you can come up with. And you can make it just as cute and funny. You can say, oh my gosh, I just hate talking about money. I would love to know more about you and your event. Just change the subject. Just change the subject. So we wanna extend the conversation to include your passion. And it's the sort of thing that you need to write down because you know what it is? It's also your mission. Your passion is your mission. The next thing is overcome the fear of specializing. You have to just try it. If you look at all the things you can be doing, some of them you may not even like doing. You know, some people love doing brides. Some people don't want to do brides at all. Some people love doing TV. Some people hate doing TV because it means they have to sit on set all day. Some people love doing special effects. Some people love doing uh, lifestyle because they like that natural cover girl look. You have to define out what it is that you love doing and build your business around that specialty. Now listen, that doesn't mean you cannot accept another job if it comes your way. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying in order to build a brand, there's no brand that you can think of that services every single person in the world. Not not even everybody has an Apple iPhone. Some people actually like Samsung. I don't know how. I don't know how that happens, but they do. So specializing doesn't mean you can't accept other jobs, but it does mean that you cater what you do to those people and you manage your brand and your marketing materials and your conversation to that so you can attract people who are looking for that because nobody's looking for everything. Number four, fine tune the words that remind potential clients of your face, your specialty, and your passion. And that is your introduction. That is your, hi, my name is Denise Johnson. I am a beauty makeup artist here in Chicago, Illinois. Typically what happens when you say that, people will ask you a question and then you can tell them what you love about it. Then you can say, well, you know what? Cirque du Soleil is just not for me. I really love taking a person from point A to point B. And you want to tell them exactly what that point is. You know, I really love, as a matter of fact, let me go here. Because I wanna talk about developing a viewpoint. And you're like, what's a viewpoint? You know what your view, viewpoint is? It's your beauty philosophy. It's where you stand. 
I'm gonna go forward and then I'm gonna come back. Take a stand. This is one of my favorite makeup artists. Her name is Manifa Mortis. And Manifa's position, Manifa's beauty philosophy is I do clean, modern, sexy makeup on women of color. Think about that. That is a statement. What kind of makeup do you do? Oh, I do clean, modern, sexy makeup on women of color. That's what I do. I have heard her say, if you want Cirque du Soleil, do not call me. This is a makeup artist who makes $2,500 a day. This is a makeup artist who decided to specialize, who realized that she did not like doing uh, fashion shows that that just wasn't her thing. She didn't like the pace of the fashion show, even though she went to fashion school because she thought that's exactly what she wanted to do. But once she got into it, she found out that it wasn't for her. This is part of her bio. Listen to what I'm saying to you. With an acute eye for detail and an impeccable painter's hand. Manifa has been creating looks for some of today's hottest entertainers. Her execution on one face bring forth a brings forth, excuse me, I have my retainer in you guys, a distinctive glamour and signature look that embodies the concept of modern beauty. What I am asking you to do is to take a stand. This is the crux of the whole thing. I believe, she says, I believe that one should never reconstruct the face beyond recognition. I want my client to feel fresh and comfortable in their makeup and not masked over. Tell me this, wouldn't you rather be having this kind of conversation with a client as opposed to talking to them about money? This is a way to bring them in. When somebody talks to me about my coaching, I don't say to them, uh, it's $1,260 for eight to 12 hours. I never say that. You know what I say? When I say, you know, I've been thinking about coaching with you. Um, how much is it? Well, tell me what's going on with you. Tell me what's going on with your business. Let me see, basically, if we're even a fit. I'm giving you permission to take control of the conversation because the things that I'm telling you to do, develop a viewpoint, identify your beauty philosophy, take a stand, these are the things that clients love in artists that they're paying upwards of $1,500 a day. This is what they love about them. They love that they have an opinion, that they have a philosophy, that they take a stand and they don't waver from what they believe or how they feel about what they do. And I'm not saying this is gonna happen overnight. You know, I hope that some of you will decide to do the Win Now Mentorship Program so I can help you with this and much, much more. But this is where you start. Somebody has a hand up, yes? No, I'm just giving a bit of feedback because that's why I'm here. So we've got Bianca's okay. She likes you thinking out the box. <laughs> Christina, Christiana in London breaking it down in a pragmatic way. Dior, she lo you love what she loves. <laughs> and then Therese says, says, I love me some Manifa. <laughs> I love it, I love it. And it's all working as it should be now. Oh good, everything's working. If you want to ask me any questions that I can- Yeah, you guys, if you want to have questions, put them in the um, chat. chat box and then Stewie will feed them to me. So here's a really big thing for me. Invest in the historical perspective. You see, being able to talk about what you do 
professionally also means that you know more about your profession than what's happening right now. One of the things that I love to have people do is to invest in doing research on different historical perspectives. Now, I wonder how many of you know who Pat McGrath is. I'm sure almost everyone, but for those of you who don't, because not everybody in here is a makeup artist, Pat McGrath is the most famous makeup artist alive right now. She does tons of huge beauty campaigns. She does all the shows all over the world. And she's got something like, I think Christiana knows, 150 assistants or 75 assistants that she takes with her everywhere she goes. In 2009, Vogue did an interview with Pat McGrath. And they asked her, what do you take with you when you travel? And I guess they thought she was just going to say, well, I take all my assistants and I take my makeup. But she takes something like 25 trunks with her everywhere she goes. Do you know what's in those trunks? Oh, what is that green line? <laughs> um, do you know what's in, that, in those trunks? Books. Books. I encourage each one of you, choose a period of time and work through the periods. Choose the 1920s. This is one of the things that we do in the Win Now Mentorship Program is that I make everyone choose a historical period like the 1920s, the 1930s, the 1940s, the 1950s. You'd be surprised what you will learn about those periods. You'd be surprised that you'll learn that whatever we're doing today, someone was already doing it, you know, 50 or 60 years ago. But what it really does it, it informs and strengthens your position as an artist because in that space where you start to learn about what came before you, you have a place to go when you're sitting at the table. There's a reason only so many artists get invited to sit at the creative table. There's a reason why only so many artists get invited to, um, to add input. There are reasons that some artists only show up and do what they're told, but others of them get involved in the process earlier. It's because they've taken the time to study that which comes before them. Okay, so let me have that, Stewie. Um, um, <laughs> So they, they've taken the time to understand what comes before them. See, that's when, when you're sitting down, it doesn't matter whether you're putting together a test. It doesn't matter whether you are sitting down to talk about uh, a, 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 pay, a, a photo shoot for a client. When you can say, you know what? I was um, doing some research about a month ago on the 1960s. And I think it would be really cool, since this is kind of a period piece, if we added this element into this project. You see, the moment you open up your mouth and you really have something to say, it's like E.F. Hutton talking. Everybody goes, oh my God, I didn't even know you were paying attention to that kind of stuff. Now you open up the door for referrals. You open up the door for better jobs. People see you as somebody who makes an absolute contribution to the end product, okay? This is where I want you to be, with a viewpoint, with your passion, understanding your why, with your beauty philosophy, understanding, taking a stand on what you believe and being able to communicate it, investing in a historical perspective and being able to communicate 
your beauty philosophy and your why and incorporating those things into your bio that goes on your website so that when people come to your site and they go to your bio, it gives them a window into your passion. It gives them a window into your personality and it makes them want to work with you. It also gives you something else to talk about besides price, besides just the numbers, okay? Uh, okay, let me answer a couple of questions. What are my opinions on business cards? We're not talking about business cards today, I don't think. Maybe a little bit right now. I'll, I'll give you something about business cards because that's a very broad question. What are my opinions on business cards? Like, do I think you should have one? You should not have one? Let me tell you something about business cards. The what most should go on them? Uh, about what should go on them? Well, I'm gonna tell you what should go on them because right now we're gonna talk about the last thing in my presentation, which is executing all your business dealings with professionalism. I can't tell you. Anybody who's ever taken a class from me knows this is my pet peeve. Because when it comes to putting together your business toolkit, the first thing that people see is your email signature. Your email signature should have basically the same information on it as your business card. Your name, your title, your email address, your web address, your phone number, and your Instagram. That is the same information that should go on your business card. Now, I will tell you one thing about business card. If you're gonna have a photograph on your business card, it should go on the opposite side of where the information is that people use to contact you because that is a very, very tiny piece of real estate. Very tiny piece of real estate, okay? Um, the most important business card is the one you get, not the one you give because the one you get is the only one you can follow up on. Not including an email signature in your email is turning off so many people you just don't know. You are not giving them, you are making it difficult for them to reach you. That's what's happening. If your email signature is not at the bottom of that email, if I cannot click on a link and go to your Instagram page, if I cannot click on a link and go to your website, you are making it hard for me to hire you. And so a lot of times when you don't realize why you're not getting called back, it's because you sent out an email without the required information for someone to be able to contact you easily. And it also means that you're thinking that if you send an email, the person's gonna email you back because you haven't included your phone number. What they really needed, because at the moment they got your email, they needed an artist and what they needed to be able to do was to pick up the phone and call you, but there was no information. So every one of your emails that you send out should have an email signature. It should also have a subject line that is representative of whatever it is you are trying to get them to do in that email. For instance, one of the ones that I like, if, you're, if you want somebody to look at your work, then one of the easiest things you can put in the subject line is new work or new uh, if you have a new tear sheet, uh, new tear sheet, makeup artist, and your name. But you want to make sure that you're putting something in the subject line that's going to make them want to open up the email and make sure it's not in all caps. Because if it's all caps, the computer in companies sees it as spammy and it might go right 
into their trash folder. You never want your subject line to be in all caps. The next thing is promptness. Be prompt about returning calls. Be prompt about returning emails. Be prompt about picking up the phone and calling somebody back. Let me tell you a story. I don't know how many of you know DeAndre Michael. DeAndre Michael is a makeup artist and he does Mary J. Blige. He also did me for my, my birthday in LA. Yes, and the fabulous pictures I have, he did the makeup for me. But when DeAndre used to live in the South, and when he moved, and then he spent some time in New York, when he moved to LA, guess which agency he called? Guess which agency he wanted to be with? Mine. Do you know why I did not represent DeAndre Michael, whose work I love and I love him as a person? Do you know why I didn't represent him? Because I didn't see his email for three months. That was a missed opportunity. One of the things that I suggest to people is that do not use your business email for anything but business. Don't use it to sign up for J. Crew. Don't use it to sign up for Walmart. Only use it for business. Only give it out to potential business clients. Only um, use it when in business correspondence. Because if you do that, you will have fewer and fewer. Um, you'll have a lot less spam coming to that particular email box and it will make it easier for you to identify and respond to an opportunity promptly. Don't never put a client on hold. If you're talking to a client that's talking to you about work or an opportunity, you don't put them on hold to get to grab your call waiting. I have been talking to people, artists that have called me, wanted something from me, and then they said, oh, can you hold a minute? No. <laughs> Make somebody else wait. That's what the call waiting is for. If you make a client, if you put a potential client on hold while they are inquiring about your services or they are trying to give you business or they are trying to book you for a job, that may be the last job you book with them, okay? The next thing is remember your, um, I got a couple questions here. Let me finish this and I'll answer them. Um, Remember your client's important occasions. See, these are the things that you can do that cost absolutely no money at all. They don't cost any money at all. And if you do them, they make people feel special. If you're doing a bridal trial at your house and your kid is running all over the house and the house smells like pork and beans, that's not sexy. That doesn't make me want to pay you $800 to do my makeup on my wedding. Manage the space where you interact with clients. Remember important occasions, birthdays, anniversaries, kids' birthdays. Send out a card. The next thing is sending out thank you cards. Thank you cards are huge and inexpensive. Go over to TJ Maxx, buy yourself two boxes of thank you cards, and get about the business of thanking people for the jobs that they gave you because they didn't have to give it to you. There's nothing worse than getting a job, doing a great job, walking away from it, feeling like you're a winner, the client is a winner, and everything went well, and you never hear from them again. It could simply be because you didn't say, thank you on paper. I cannot tell you how far a thank you card and a Starbucks gift card will get you in this life. And here's another thing. It's not free to be in business. It's not free. You don't get to just go do your job, collect a check, and go on about your business. Many times, the makeup artist is making more than the producer, making more than the 
than the uh, art director, making more than the magazine editor. And you can't spend $10 on a Starbucks gift card. I have had people give me Walmart gift cards, Target gift cards. I am just as happy about that Target $10 gift card as I am about that Starbucks gift card. The point is that you thought about it. The point is that it's a way of showing appreciation and it doesn't have to cost a lot of money, but in big companies, do you realize that they spend 20% a year of their revenue for marketing themselves? And this is the cheapest, these are the cheapest marketing things that you can do. I have lots of great things that you can do to market yourself, but we don't have time for all that today. Um, another thing is buy gifts. Yes, buy gifts, buy presents for your best clients that book you all the time. Find out what they like. Send a bottle of champagne. Send a nice bottle of red wine at Christmas time. Give them a gift on their birthday. I'm not suggesting that every time you do a job, you give a gift, but I'm telling you right now that if you're not giving gifts, other people are. And the more money they make, the better gifts they give. I know people that give their clients Gucci bags. You don't have to start with a Gucci bag. But if you start giving small gifts now, you'll start getting bitter, bigger and better jobs. And you'll be able to give bigger and better gifts. And you'll get bigger and better jobs. Hello? OK, I have some questions. Will this be replayed? Yes, I'm going to put it up. I'll put it up. Oh, I know what I'll do. I'll put it up somewhere. I'll put it up on my, um, on my Facebook page or something. I'll figure it out. But yes, 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 yes. I'm going to put it up so you guys can rewatch it. Next question. What book should I read to get better informed? I am so glad you asked that question. Look at this. When a couple of years ago in 2015, I did an event called the PYP Summit, which was amazing. Uh, People like Sharita Leslie were there, and if you watch her, you've seen her career, and she will tell you what an impact that the PYP Summit had on her, and lots and lots and lots of other artists. But I had one of my PYP grads, Jennifer McDougal, I had her do a presentation on negotiation, because she is the best. She is so good that she lives in a high rise, fabulous apartment in New York, and she gets the rent lowered every year while everybody else's rent goes up. That's what a great negotiator she is. And this book right here, as a matter of fact, I actually have another slide that has this book in it, but I'm gonna give it to Stewie. It's called The Negotiation Phrase Book. It is totally the most awesome book ever. Words to win every negotiation. Yes, Stewie. Shelly Ann said, there's all this info in your new book. She just purchased it yesterday. <laughs> uh, some of it is, but no, not all. Shelly Ann, that book is two pounds already. Do you know that book is 400 pages and two pounds? There's no way that I can put all of this in that book. So some of it is, some of it isn't. Definitely the email signature and all that stuff is totally, definitely in there. And there is a marketing section in the book. I mean, honestly, I will not even allow people to register for the people. Well, I'll let them register, but they have to read the Hair, Makeup, and Fashion Selling Career Guide before they can come to the PYP workshop because you'll just totally be behind the curve. I cannot tell you guys this book will change your life. It'll change your life. Uh, yes, Dewey. You ain't playing. <laughs> I'm not playing. I want you guys to win. I want you to win. The thing is, you have to invest in yourself. Nobody owes you to sit you down and explain everything that you need to do. I know you know people in the business. We all know people in the business but it's not their job to empower you to be able to compete with them. You gotta go out and get your own, okay? Yes, Dewey? Proper 
plan prevents this poor performance. Did you guys hear that? Stewie says, proper planning prevents piss poor performance. I think that's gonna be my uh, Instagram post tomorrow. Okay, here's your bonus lesson. Little bit extra. For those of you who are in salons and you are trying to melt your salon work into your freelancing, you need to separate them. Now that does not mean that you don't have some shots from your salon clients that you can't use on your, uh, your Instagram and your website. There will be some, but by and large, for your freelancing, all those before and afters, they got to go. You can use that stuff on bridal, but you cannot use it if you're trying to get editorial work, if you're trying to get commercial work like ads for Nike and uh, uh, Coca-Cola. The decision makers who hire artists for those jobs are completely turned off by those before and afters. It's a wrap, don't do it, okay? And the other thing is, a lot of times people have salons and their salon has a salon name, but you have a regular name. Well, guess what? Nobody's going to call you by your salon name on the set. And for many decision makers, it's a disconnect. Okay? It's a total disconnect. So I want you to get that together. Now, here's the next thing. And I know, because I read my stats, and I know that this audience right now is 90% women. Are you sitting down? I got something to tell you. You all, nobody gets famous as a makeup artist, a hairstylist, a fashion stylist, or manicurist from working on men. And if you're gonna work on women, you're going to have to learn how to compliment them. Women complain all the time about male hairdressers. You complain that the women want to go to them instead of coming to you. But the difference between the way many women artists treat women clients and the way men treat us is so different, that's what makes us want to go to men. Now, I happen to have two women hairstylists and both of them are awesome. You cannot do a woman's hair or do her makeup, and when you're done, hand her a bill and think you've actually done something. Because you're making an assumption that maybe because her hair is beautiful, or maybe because her makeup is, maybe her hair is beautiful, maybe she's got a high-powered job, maybe she's all this and all that, that she's competent. We're not always when we sit down in a chair. I hate going to the hair salon. I hate the way that I look when I go in there. I want somebody to say to me, oh my God, Crystal, you look fabulous. Or, oh, let me do this. And when I finish, you're gonna be so awesome. I did a class in Portland two weeks ago. Oh, it was an awesome class and the recording messed up. I was bummed out. But anyway, I did a class in Portland. And one of the young ladies confessed to me that she was not comfortable giving women compliments. And in turn, she was not comfortable accepting compliments. I'd never ever heard that before. This is why I love doing this, because I always learn something. I'd never heard that before. And I gave her a challenge. And that challenge was to compliment, I think, at least four women. That, no, no, no. The challenge was for her to say nothing but thank you when somebody paid her a compliment. Now, I don't know what's going on out there. And I don't know if anybody has this challenge. But I know that as women, if we want these high-powered women with these big checkbooks and these celebrities to call on us, then we have got to get comfortable with paying compliments to other women. 
We've got to stop assuming that that woman has it all together. She may be just as insecure as you are, and you're going to have to give her a little piece of yourself to make her feel good because she's going to give you bigger tips. She's going to keep coming back, and she's going to talk about you to her friends. And that is how we get referrals. Yes, Stewie. I like Laurie Pearson because I can see another. She's, she's still, she's involved. <laughs> so she said, are you going to do another hair, makeup, and fashion styling career guide in 90 days class? Oh, yes. I Okay, you guys. So what ha happened was I came up with this idea to do a through the book in 90 days. And all the early adopters of the Hair, Makeup, and Fashion Selling Career Guide were invited into that group. And now we still have the group. And I am putting together a class. I promise I'll announce it within the next two weeks to do a through the book in 60 days. I really think 90 days was too long. But let me tell you, everyone loved it. Because what I did was, I chose the topics that we were going to talk about, and we met once a week for 12 weeks. But what happens is people start falling off. People's attention span, I think, is about eight weeks. So the answer is yes. I'm going to do a course called Through the Book in 60 Days. And Lori, you just took the cat out of the bag. I can't believe it. So let's summarize. Let me summarize, and then we're going to open it up to questions. What is it that we're trying to do here? Number one, we want to focus. We want to specialize in something, and that does not preclude us from doing other work. It does not preclude us from taking other work, but it positions us as an expert in our field, and it makes us, it gives us more self-confidence, and it gives us something that we can talk about that's really uh, foundational and, and very conclusive. You know, this is what I do, and this is why I do it, and this is what I specialize in. Because in that space, once you've done something for somebody, they'll start asking you to do other things. Well, can you do this? Can you do that? Yes, but you want to maintain your focus. Clients who pay artists big money, it's because those artists have, uh, have focused on something, they talk about their specialty, and they stand on it. The next thing is we want to communicate with vision, which comes from our why. We want to communicate from a perspective and a viewpoint. Have an opinion. I am about one of the most opinionated people you will ever meet. That has not ever stopped anybody from, well, it probably has stopped somebody from liking me, but I can't worry about the few people who can't be bothered with me because I have a perspective, a viewpoint, and an opinion. I'm looking for my tribe. I only need my tribe. People who don't get frightened by the sound of my voice. Number three, execute everything that you do with professionalism from your email signature to the subject line that you're using execute with professionalism i mean we don't have time to talk about all the business things and sending invoices and all of that um but ask yourself is it, are you at a hundred percent are you operating at a hundred percent and number four, separate your ventures. If you have a salon and you're trying to break into freelancing, separate them so that the clients on the side of the business where you're trying to attract uh, producers and directors and photographers are not looking at all your before and afters. Because the truth is, in the real world of fashion and beauty, nobody cares about it before. Nobody takes pictures of it before. When was the last time you saw some picture of some famous model with no makeup on out there going, no, you only see the after. You only see the beauty after. So next steps. What are your next steps? Number one, 
I want you guys to check out this negotiation phrase book because I think it will really, really help you. It'll really help you. You know, I've got some other great books like The Now Habit. If you have our challenge with procrastinating, uh, The Now Habit is great. And, um, you know, we even deal with that procrastination. Procrastination really usually is uh, someone who's focused on being a perfectionist. It's the being the perfectionist that's causing you to procrastinate. And we deal with um, that in the Win Now Mentorship Program. The next thing is get into Facebook groups that support your mission and feed your soul and get out of the ones that are making you feel, uh, um, that are making you feel angry and upset and frustrated and wanting to throw your lot in with a bunch of people who are in a bad mood. Get out! No, I don't allow any of that foolishness in my groups at all. Yes, Julie? Would you like me to unmute everyone or would you like people to? Oh yeah, we can unmute some people and, and if they have them raise their hand up. If you have a question, Raise your hand and Stewie will unmute you and we can have a conversation. So how about this? If you don't have a question, but you have a comment or you had an aha moment while I was doing this presentation, I would love to hear what you have to say. Anyone? Um, very important question. You're going to be in LA soon. What date are you going to be at what School. I'm going to be at EI the 14th. I'm going to be at Makeup Designery on the 15th. And I'm going to be at April Love Pro Makeup Academy on the 16th, I think. But I'm doing a four hour uh, portfolio building and marketing at April Love Pro Makeup Academy. I do that there like twice a year. So there you have it. I see that there are still a lot of people here. Does anyone have any? questions. Let me look through my notes and see if there's anything that I forgot that I wanted to tell you. Was this helpful? I guess if you stayed to the end, it must have been helpful. Is that what I'm supposed to take from this? For nobody talking to me? Yes, Lori said extremely helpful. Yes, it was very, very helpful, Crystal. Thank you so so much. You're so welcome. You're so welcome. Janai says yes. Christiana says, very. Karen says, yes, it was very helpful. Absolutely, I need to watch it a few more times. Oh, that's great, that's great, that's great. You helped me on Instagram instantly. Oh my God, I love that. Very helpful, says Javon. Okay, Zara, yes. I think the key thing, Crystal, if you don't mind me saying, is that you give the people confidence when you coach them. So they've already got the skills, but you give them confidence to go to go for it because they're inhibited and they're restricted by their lack of confidence. Right. Hi, Crystal. My Hi. name is Zara. Hi. I'm Zara Hair One on Instagram. <laughs> but as you were giving us tips on what you should do on um, Instagram, as far as like, you know, putting special specified hashtags, as you were talking, I posted a picture and I did what you said and I got five followers. And I usually don't get much followers on my posts. I might get a lot of likes, but I got followers on them. So, Come I mean, on. five is not much, but for me, that's, that's a lot. <laughs> right, right. Well, let me tell you, um, I have really been studying this hashtag thing, and I have figured some things out. Yesterday, which was Wednesday, when I had the meeting with my Win Now uh, students that are in the current uh, session, uh, mm -hmm. I was sharing them stuff, a lot of stuff that I've learned about hashtags, and it really makes a difference. It yeah. can really make a difference, but you gotta, you gotta mess around with it a little bit. But yeah. when, you, when you do something that it works, then hold on to that and tweak one thing at a time 
and let it roll for like a couple of weeks to see what kind of impact it's having. Because if you start jockeying around with too many things, you won't yeah. know what's working and what's not. But I always thought that if there were more people looking at it or using that hashtag, that it would be better for me. I didn't realize that if it was less, you oh. know, people using that hashtag, that it would be better for me. Isn't that so, something? Yeah. Isn't that something? Right? Well, thank you. Thank <laughs> you so much. <laughs> You're so welcome. You're so welcome. Okay, you guys, if you guys are done with me, I'm going to let you go. I'll stay here for another five minutes and answer questions. But if you're not going to ask me questions, I'm going to let you go. I hope that some of you decide to take this to the next level. I would love to be your mentor and your coach. Shelly Ann says, you have to be my mentor and coach after I'm finished with the book. <laughs> All right, you guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something from it because I loved doing it. And Stewie and I are going off to LA tomorrow to a birthday party. So I hope you are enjoying your life. I am doing my best to enjoy mine. Thank you so much for showing up. This is the first webinar I've done in a very long time. And I will catch you later. Bye.